There had been several playhouses in Austin in the 1870s, but it wasn't until Captain Charles F. Millet announced that his lumber and planing mill was to be replaced by an opera house that a suitable theater was built. Austin was in every sense a boom town, and to fit the new elegance of this era, a strong demand for a new opera house was finally heard. Not much is known of Captain Millet besides the fact that he owned a lumber yard, except that he was active in the volunteer fire department from its inception in 1858, acting as the group's first chief. After making the decision to convert his mill into an opera house, Captain Millet hired the architect Ruffini to prepare the plan. Ruffini also designed the first main building for the University of Texas at Austin. Within less than a year, Millet's Opera House held its grand opening with a performance of My Awful Dad with John Dillon. Admission for reserved seats in the balcony were a dollar, with a 50 cents admission charge for the gallery. In the late 1880s, major remodeling brought luxurious pleasure and comfort to performers and up to 800 patrons. There were plush-backed seats that folded automatically, and later, electric fans. The Millet became the place for everything. UT graduation exercises, young ladies coming out, school closings, local performances, roller skating, political conventions, and even boxing matches. In the mid-1890s, the curtains fell on the Millet Opera House for the last time, pushed aside by newer and larger theaters. Since that time, the building has undergone numerous changes. A third story was added, and new businesses moved in and out. Today, the Millet Opera House, standing proudly at 110 East 9th Street in its revival, is a charming and elegant home for the Austin Club. Recent modifications have erased any trace of the Opera House interior, although period decorative treatments have been retained. The Austin Club's development intent for the exterior was to restore the facade to its appearance in 1911, when the existing two-story gallery was added. Walking into what is now the lobby of the Austin Club, one sees beautiful wooden doors with etched glass that open into the lounge and hallway. Here, one could see the stage of the Opera House in 1878. But in 1982, there are glistening chandeliers overlooking elegant, more modern places to sit while waiting to eat in one of the many dining rooms in the club. Bills of plays are located on the walls of one of the meeting rooms, reminding members and guests that there is much more history to the building than meets the eye. On one wall, another unusual and decorative hanging has been placed, one of the few remaining authentic remnants of the millet, a piece of the original stage ceiling. Throughout the Austin Club, there are meeting rooms, card rooms, and dining areas, all tastefully decorated with light fixtures that are reproductions of period pieces, adding to the mood and ambiance of the place. The formal dining room is particularly well designed. It's hard to believe that almost a century ago, this is the area where performers from all over the world came and played on a huge stage for enthusiastic Austin audiences. The ceilings of pressed tin run throughout the entire building and were also installed during the renovation of 1911. There's an extensive use of wood. Hardwood floors and wooden doors are extremely distinctive and lend a certain warmth to the building. On the second floor, one can see certain similarities to the first floor. It was also on this level that the actors and actresses would dress for their performances at the millet. The original Opera House dressing rooms with sliding doors are now used as private game rooms and lounge areas. A less formal dining room is also on this level. It's called the medallion room because the chandeliers are held by medallion-shaped fixtures, giving the room a style all its own. 
However, the medallion fixtures were not existent in the original opera house, and neither were the columns in the room. The second floor balcony overlooking 9th Street was also added in 1911. The columns, here built into stone, are original. The blue wood ceiling is authentic as well. The balcony ceiling was painted blue because it was believed that the wasps in the area would refuse to build their nests on anything painted that color. On the third floor of the building, there are more private meeting and dining rooms with the original doors and doorknobs. Although not from the opera house, the ceiling fans add a decorative touch. This is the attic. Though nothing is kept here, the wooden beams that support the roof are original. These same beams have held the roof up since 1887. The metal plates that bond the beams are the only pieces that have been replaced. The exterior of the Millet Opera House has been left as it was in 1910. Austin's Heritage Society recognized the beauty and splendor of the Millet Opera House last year by honoring the building with an award. All Austinites should recognize the history and survival of the Millet Opera House with a feeling of admiration and respect, for it is one of the few lasting reminders of where we have been and how far we've come.